morning is Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 39. The greatest commandment. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. Here ends the reading of the word. So as we assemble, um, some of us are here, of course, to share our testimony, our experiences on this trip. Uh, the first time a group from this church went on this trip, COVID struck two weeks later and, and shut everything down. So it's been a long time coming that we, we've wanted to share um, some details about the trip with you. So there were 14 of us that went um, all together. The group up here behind me, as well as three other members from this church, and then some from other congregations um, joined us. And we really created some bonds, of course, that will, will stick with us. So the, the organization Give Ye Them to Eat is based off of Mark chapter 6, sort of, verse 37, where Jesus talks about the, the feeding with the loaves and the fish. Um, and that's really the mission of this group is to feed those um, who are less fortunate than us, to, to give back to them um, from some of us who are able to do so. And I know it's hard to see, but there it is. The little red dot is where we were um, in Mexico. It's in the state of Puebla, um, which is about a two-hour bus ride south of Mexico City, um, which if you've ever been on a Mexico road, two hours is an eternity. You thought Pennsylvania was bad. <laughs> Mexico beats us. In a bus. In a bus. Um, and there are several areas to the JITI program that um, they tend to focus on. The first one is the AWARE program, which is what our group participated in. Um, it's an alternative work, study, and reality experience. Um, so it's not so much as a mission trip as we call it, but it's an experience where we go and we are immersed in the reality that is that area. Um, and it truly is an experience. Um, there are also several other areas to the JITI program, which you'll hear about in a moment. Um, JITI was started back in 1972 by uh, Muriel and Terry Henderson, and they headed up this, this group in Mexico all the way till 2013 when the new missionaries took over. And this is my favorite picture from both of the trips. This picture was taken with my phone out of the van window. That is how close we were to the active volcano for most of the trip. And this is just a quick overview of what our daily schedule was. Um, as you can see, there are at least four times of the day when the Mexican culture eats, um, which nobody really complained about, but it is a lot. Um, there's a lot of hard work, a lot of heat, but they do feed us well. So these are the missionaries that are currently working that took over for the Hendersons. This is Nan and Miguel. Um, Nan worked in Nicaragua with her late husband, Philip Mitchell, during the Sandinistan Revolution, and they ministered to uh, victims of the war zone. Um, in part of her call to mission, Nan says this, sell all your things, give to the poor and follow me. This is Christ's most difficult message for us as U.S. Christians, and I think you will probably agree. Our worth and well-being are so wrapped up in what we have, in contrast to people in countries like Mexico and Nicaragua 
who have nothing but their faith. Miguel was raised in Nicaragua in a very poor family. Uh, because there were so many children, he did not have an opportunity to go to school until he was 20 years old. He started first grade when he was 20. He went on to study at Wesley Theological Seminary. He is now a lawyer with a master's degree in criminal law. And after the Sandinistan Revolution in Nicaragua, he worked on community projects there to help farmers and war veterans um, through the Nazarene Church, through World Vision, and through other organizations. Of his call to ministry, Miguel uses uh, Matthew 25, 40 as his base verse. I tell you the truth, and this is Jesus speaking, whatever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. When Miguel and Nan first married, they had both been married previously. Um, they combined their family. They now have a blended family of three sons and three daughters who live in four different countries. Uh, they both began battling, or they continued their battle for human rights with women and children in Nicaragua after the war. Um, so both of them have experience working with impoverished people groups and working against social injustices. In 2014, after the Hendersons um, finished their mission work in Jitty, uh, Nan and Miguel took over. And the main Jitty office, Jitty is give you them to eat. Um, the main office is in Puebla, but Nan and Miguel spend most of their time, or much of their time anyhow, at the Tree of Life Center, which is where we served at, we call it the ranch. Um, it's kind of the home base for the visiting mission teams um, and a training center for local people to learn more of the sustainable agriculture and health techniques that Jitty teaches. Uh, Miguel's kind of the all around go-to man, fix it man, maintenance man, and leading, leads the construction crews and organizes those kind of things. And Miguel, Nan leads the groups in education times, um, training, and day-to-day -day tasks at the, at the ranch. So now I'm just gonna go through some pictures of the ranch and some of the things that we experienced and saw there. Um, this is as you enter the ranch, the Tree of Life, the main office building, um, just some of the things that you see as you walk around. Some of the buildings are training centers for, like I said, local people come there for training and uh, some of the places that we used for our training. Um, Beyond this, if it was a clear day, you could see the volcano that Becky just showed you a picture of. This is the chapel. One of the classrooms. Um, David and Becky are not smiling because of all the candy on the table. They are, uh, these are some of the donations that you gave, uh, that David's church gave and that we all collected um, to take there. It looks like a lot of candy, but actually the other end of the table is educational supplies, and we had already pulled all the medical supplies out, so thank you so much for all the donations in those areas. Um, this is a paper-making craft that we were part of. Uh, there are goats, chickens, turkeys. We cleaned goat pens one day. Um, very fun. The, the basic idea is to get us immersed in the Mexican culture to experience the things that they would experience daily. Um, some of the creatures we saw, the scorpion on the left was in the shower with me. <laughs> I didn't know it was there until Becky went in the shower after me and said, Mom, you couldn't tell me there was a scorpion in the shower? <laughs> I just kind of ignored it. So. Um, one of the projects we did was retiling a roof. Uh, we had to take all the tiles off, and this iguana ran out from the tiles. And this is a before when we first caught him, and this is the after at supper that night. <laughs> I, I tasted the crust that we fried him in. I didn't really taste the iguana. And this is his tail in the middle up there. Um, tarantulas were, were seen also. This is pretty much life size that turn no, it's about as big as the palm of your hand so not something you want to mess with um, we cleaned up in the in the woods there we were pulling wood like the ladies would have to do each day for their fires um, learned how to make tortillas this is the roofing project that we worked on uh, we had to 
Ray and Becky mostly cleaned up some bamboo to work on that project. We did painting. And in the chapel area, there's a place for all the teams to sign your names uh, when you're finished at the end of the week. And you can see the 2020 team from Susquehanna Valley and the 2022 team from the Susquehanna Conference. So, and yeah, when we left, we noticed there was a scorpion on the wall there too, so. <laughs> Don't know who's up. Okay, just so happened when we got there, uh, this was, uh, we saw this on a Saturday night. Uh, we were just, we were still in uh, Mexico at the time, weren't we? Uh, in uh, Mexico City. Uh, we went out and saw this display and it was the end of the, uh, yeah, what did they call that? The, what'd you call it, Becky? Day of the, day. the Day of the Dead. That was it. Um, we, if Saturday was the last, it was a whole week affair that they have, and uh, this was the last day that we saw. They were they set it up as a, like a shrine to the, this the, in Pebla, uh, the church there behind us. We visited that and saw a lot of the arrangements and stuff that they had made up. Uh, there you see now that on the right there. It's only one out of a, a whole row of what they had made up as far as what they're having standing. On the left was like a, it wasn't much of, it was a marketplace. You could have bought, bought some things. And we went through and picked out some, I mean, looked at some things. It was very interesting. There's another one of the alders that they had set up. Uh, they do a lot of uh, offering food uh, with their, the altars. This was Saturday afternoon. We had just caught the ending, or I should say the last, would have been the last dance of what they were doing. And that was in, I think it was part of a church, wasn't it? That they were in. Uh, anyway, I know it was going to, it, most of the time I think it was a type of a museum that they did, but this was part of the dance sense of that they did, very, very good. The things you see hanging up there, they're paper, they're not cloth, and they were all hand cut uh, and hung up. You'll see that all over Mexico during that celebration. This was a buffet that was, it was a breakfast buffet that they gave us oh, not, uh, before we left, so that was the restaurant that we ate at. Uh, on the other side, now since the weather is the way it is down there, on the other side, on the outside, is where all the food would have been and you come in to sit down because by noon, you're ready for air conditioning. That's some of the food that we saw. Down on the bottom here, that tube looking thing is basically made out of, I don't know if you want to call it fried cheese or what, but it's laid out and then dipped into a deep fryer. And uh, it was passed around. You just kind of take off a piece like you would a loaf of bread. You just ate a little bit and passed it on. That was outside, and I think, Becky, the picture was outside of that nursery, wasn't it, that you took this? This picture was actually right at the bottom of the pyramid that we were able oh, to okay. climb. It's a natural poinsettia. It is, a, yes, that's outside. They grow down there wild. and. That just blew our minds. I mean, the way that thing is so tall, beautiful, beautiful bird, uh, flower. This is a, out on the streets. You will see the people. Um, they got to substitute their incomes. And this is what they do. They go out and sell things. This here is, uh, I think Becky took these. Did you take them from the bus as we went by? from the road because these are, people live in the house and the stuff along the side, uh, it's like supplement to their income. They make, their front room basically is a little store. You can go in and buy things. The, 
they're hoping tourists stop and pick something up. That's another one of the streets you can shop a little bit up through. Oh. There we go. That church is in there. We go again. At, uh, I'm a Dutchman. I, these words are as Tokong Kwapakan. Becky, please. Close enough? Oh, oh it doesn't come out right. This is another one of the churches in Pebla. Thursday evening church service. We were, it's a Methodist church. That's not mine, right? Nope, that's not yours. Okay. This was the church we were uh, lucky enough to attend with the people of Tlan Um This is the United Methodist Church called Gethsemane. Um, one of the members of our group that came from another congregation was a pastor, and he was able to um, present a message to that church. Um, obviously, they didn't understand it in English, so we had some translation issues. Um, but it was held outside, and this is the view from the people sitting on that patio. Um, there you'll see in the front, Marion, our, one of our group leaders, she does a children's lesson with a small puppet every time, and the children don't get that kind of experience, like we have children's lessons in our, in our messages, um, so they really took to that, and her little puppet. And then immediately following the service, more people from the town came because they knew we were, we were coming. Um, and we served a meal to the people of the town, and it was just a fantastic experience where we were able to mingle with them. And although communication was very limited, it was, it was just very humbling to be among them. And after the service, we had some of the ladies in town. These are hand-embroidered cloths. They're not even handkerchiefs. They're like fur on your table, and they were absolutely beautiful. They, again, sold things like this to supplement their family income. Dry composting toilets doesn't seem to be a thing we should be talking about here this morning. And we grin and giggle, but it's very serious and very important to the folks in Jitty. <clears throat> There's a list of things, the time it takes for things to decompose, different things. Start at the top, paper towels two to four weeks, and at the bottom, we wind up with plastic bags, which I bet somebody would have one in their pocket or in their bag right now. Um, we just can't get away from them. Before, while you're looking at this and while I think of it, I would like to thank everyone <clears throat> from this congregation for their generous support and prayers, not only for myself, but for the rest of the team and for the folks in Mexico um, providing this trip. This is how the dry coast dry composting toilet begins with the foundation. You'll see two different stalls there. On top of them, a concrete slab will be laid. But underneath them, there are two holes. Um, they use one side at a time, and underneath there is where the waste will go. Here's the slab on top. You see he's working on one hole and there's another. And when the one side gets filled up, they move the toilet to the other side. On the left is the finished product, walled up, doors on it, and the toilet's there. And beside it, you see the bucket. There's uh, mostly ash in there and it's combined with, I think, lime, something else. And after you, let's see, there it shows it better. You can see a partition in the middle of the toilet there. Solids in the back, liquids in the front. And when you're finished, that bucket contains ash, wood ash, which they, they cook with wood fire so they con have a constant supply of the wood ash. You dump a scoop of that in there, and if, you're, if your job was to do liquid, you take a splash of a little water down the front to rinse it through. And paper goes in the paper can, no paper down the hole.
And this is another finished outside looks. At first look, without the decorations, it would take you back to 100 years ago in this country where we had outhouses. They are, to us, it seems inconvenient to do something like this. But it's a way of life. It becomes a way of life. And one of the reasons is, as Becky's children's talk, was to save this earth. Because previous to these, they had latrines. Previous to that, you're just in the field like the wild dogs, wherever you're at. And this was part of the part of the water problem. Anybody who's ever gone to Mexico and talked about it with someone, the first words, your first words of advice, don't drink the water. This is one of the reasons, and it's been going on for centuries. So benefits of a dry composting toilet. It uses little water. It's easy for families to build. Economical construction supplies made with materials that are readily available. <clears throat> it's ecologically sound. It protects water sources and it provides resources. The dry, the solids are left to um, compost and then cleaned out and one side is full to use the other and let that compost for a while and take that out and spread it on the fields. The liquid goes into either a, a jug, like a, one of our water jugs that we purchase water in, and left to ferment in the sun and used as urea, or it um, goes down a drain and into a drain field out into the, into the lot. And the dry is called humanure. <laughs> One of the uh, things they offer at the Tree of Life is the program called More Than a Bandage. Uh, they're week-long courses given to women, uh, and uh, the total is three courses over an 18-month period. Uh, it's designed to address the health issues and needs of cultural communities in Mexico. The object is to give rural families the opportunity to learn about preventive health measures. This is accomplished by equipping village women as volunteer workers for community-based health care. The training enables them to share what they have learned with others so that they can... Uh, this empowers people to prevent serious diseases by changing the conditions which cause it. They're able to treat illnesses in its earliest stage right in their own community. And like I said, they attend three courses um, and then they'll, they're allowed to go out and teach um, what they have learned. So basic, uh, the, the basic course, uh, like I say, it uh, teaches them about cleaning their fruits and vegetables, dental hygiene, nutrition, dishwashing, and there's many other things that they also learn about. The next course is the intermediate course. They learn about parasites, intermuscular injections, uh, first aid, uh, and CPR, like headaches and migraines, uh, bites and stings, which you can imagine they might get a lot of those, uh, lead poisoning, etc. The last course is the pregnancy and delivery, uh, menopause, blood pressure, STDs and cancers, and also many others. So the healthcare workers uh, gain additional information and they learn new skills at the regional meetings each spring and fall. So the, um, the cost for these courses to the women is $350 uh, per person. So if they would take all three courses, it would cost them $1,050. So uh, after completing this, they would get their, uh, these teaching materials and a first aid kit to, to go out into communities and help with health care. So if you're looking for any, some type of a mission um, that would touch hundreds of lives, uh, you can consider, consider uh, 
taking on this bandage program. Um, you can go on the website uh, to the conference and, uh, and then you'll receive a certificate uh, and also a photograph of the person that you might have sponsored. Uh, so, and we thank you very much for all the donations you gave at the outset of when we started our mission. Uh, and you can, uh, I will show you a picture later, but the, this is how many people were reached back in 2018-19. Uh, so how many uh, people can be reached just through one person going through this program. This is uh, Marion Hartman standing at the table. This is all the things that we took in our suitcases and uh, that were gathered from the churches locally here. And they were very grateful when they unpacked and saw all the different items that can be used for these healthcare workers. This is the school we went to this past trip. I was like a preschool age, we're standing at the gate waiting for them to get there to unlock it. So, um, this is just a small courtyard inside the little playground. And here, uh, this is Estella giving a presentation, of telling the children what uh, food groups they should be eating to, to be healthy. There's the grains down in the yellow portion up on top, fruits and vegetables, and then meats, which they don't get a whole lot of meat to eat. But um, she would explain to the children, you know, what they should be eating instead of a lot of soda and everything. You see a lot of stores selling lots of soda down there. Here's, this is the group in the foreground there. In the back, you can see some of our group. Uh, and you see these children were fairly young. And here, but after the talk, they sh gave them little cups with carrots and cucumbers in there to taste those type of foods that they should be eating for snacks. And this is the school we went to on our previous trip, and this was about dental hygiene. Uh, they have a big tooth there, and they're talking about how they should prevent uh, cavities, what they should do in order to prevent them. Then uh, they put on a little skit where the Mr. Cavity tried to attack the, the tooth there and destroy it. And uh, and we handed out the toothbrushes and toothpaste. Probably some children had never brushed their teeth before. Um, and then afterwards, um, you know, they were all staying there brushing their teeth. And they, Marion's thrown the baseball there. They were quite impressed with how good she could play baseball. Um, this is the next person. The compacted earth homes that we built while we were down there um, was kind of the main reason we went down because they need so much labor. Um, they're constructed mostly of stone, which we chiseled out ourselves with a very large, heavy hammer. And then it kind of gets concreted into these foundations. Um, that's Caleb. He had a blast with the large hammer. Um, and you can see the, the structure is built out of metal posts, and there's a, a welder on the ladder welding the joints. Um, and then we laid all the cement for the floors, very, very basic. Um, first, we had to sift all of the dirt for the concrete mix ourselves by hand. That is a reused bed spring <laughs> that we tossed it through to sift it out. Um, mix the concrete right on the ground, poured it in. Um, there's sections of rebar through the concrete to help stabilize it. And the, 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 most, the, the biggest ingredient in the walls is just straw mixed with the concrete and the, and the different combinations. You can see we mixed it ourselves by hand um, and then compacted it into the walls. It's a very, very messy day compacted in, tapped it down, and that is really the structure of the wall with the rebar in it. Um, and they built these specifically because they're very sturdy when they have earthquakes, um, which are fairly common in this area. Um, so with the rebar in, it kind of keeps the building from crumbling, and they're, they're very sustainable. And then this is our group. This was the last picture of the home that we built, the same style from the last trip. 
And then immediately after that, we had a, a large meal with most of the staff workers, laborers, the kitchen crew, um, where we exchanged gifts with them. And this was kind of our very emotional farewell dinner that we, we got to have with them and the group. So again, as we've said, um, thank you, thank you for your generosity in supporting us in the collections. Um, I knew as soon as we came back from the first trip, I said, I'm ready to start playing in the next one. Um, so hopefully, maybe in the near future, we can get another group together. But thank you again.